Last Sunday, we had our introduction to our new series in Colossians, which I titled, um, I don't know if we can show uh, the title on screen, that we may not be deceived, standing firm and fully assured in our knowledge of Christ. No? And this morning, we begin our study of the body of the letter itself. Okay, so we're, for this morning, we will read verse 1 and 2. So let's all stand as we honor God and His Word this morning. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, Grace and peace to you from God, our Father. Now, let's pray. Lord, we thank you again for gathering us today. We know, Lord, that it is your will that we gather as a body. Each and every day we worship you individually on our own. Today we rejoice in our voices proclaiming our worship and our exaltation of your name, Lord. We thank you that we can come and pray, come and give, Lord. And we thank you that we can come and expect a working of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, bringing the truth of your word to each one of us. Father, we are trusting totally in you this morning that the scripture which you inspired the authors to write will also move in our hearts through the working of the Holy Spirit and will bring, Lord, your working and your desire to each one of us. Sa imo lang ginoon, nagahalin ang conviction. And so we are trusting in you for that. Bring your conviction upon every believer who is here this morning. And we are also trusting in the power of your conversion as your gospel is continually preached, O oh Lord. So we trusted you for this. We thank you. As always, even now, all glory belongs to you alone, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, I forgot to remind the ushers to check if dala nyo ang backtrack nyo. And <laughs> if you read the book of Colossians, again, I strongly encourage you no? para ma-enjoy gid naton ang works ang Holy Spirit sa Scripture, no? that we read this together, not just the sermon. You know, the sermon, brethren, every Sunday, that's just a small part of what God works in our hearts. Eh? You know, a, a Sunday sermon cannot fully bring you know, the fullness of God's message from His Word. Uh, for this moment, there is a specific message that God has for those of you who are here or sa live stream. Um, kung naka-attend ka mo sa afternoon service, you will notice that sometimes the, the message changes a little sa afternoon. Kay lain ang nag attend eh. Now, same passage, same outline, but sometimes God speaks differently because at this moment there is a working of God. But if you, if you, you, you surrender yourselves to, to God's word no, and, and the working of the Holy Spirit, you will be so surprised no, how much we will learn from one another. I heard some um, good feedback na may mga iban nga discipleship groups na nagsugod na kamo mag-discuss pati sa mga hollow and deceptive philosophies no? and human traditions. No? And I thank God for that because there are really so many of these hollow and deceptive philosophies and traditions that we need to um, really think and ask the Lord, Lord, are these practices according to your word? Are they founded in Christ? Or are, or are they founded in religion? Or are they founded in human relationships? So, napaka-importante gid. The church in Colossae, at that moment of Paul's writing, was experiencing exactly that. They were surrounded, as all other churches were. But when Paul wrote Colossians, that was the 
incident that he was addressing, that they were surrounded with hollow and deceptive philosophies, human traditions that were not based on Christ. Uh, these are the things uh, eventually that we are going to um, not, not really discuss here, but really see uh, with regards to Paul's letter. And because of this, Paul wrote his letter so that he could both, two things actually, no? it was not just protecting them from the deception that was around them, but more importantly, Paul wanted them to grow in their understanding of the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of God and His will in Christ. You, you can be a Christian who recognizes deception, but at the same time, not know anything about Christ. So, ang gwa mo na lang is, taga, taga check ka lang kung ano ang false. Pero ang understanding mo sa truth, kay Kristo, wala man. And so, it's, we, we are going through Colossians not really to show us what those deceptions are, but really to bring us to that important understanding that we need to stand firm and fully assured in our knowledge of Christ. Amunang importante. That's why if you read Colossians, there are no detailed, very few detailed teachings about the hollow and deceptive philosophies. Ara ang circumcision, ara ang general, ano, mga general things that dapat itake up. But Paul did not focus on those things. He actually focused on Christ. And that's why we're going to see a lot of things concerning Christ in this letter. Okay? And as all of his letters, uh, Paul begins with the usual format. Okay? He introduces himself as the writer no? together with Timothy. So this was obviously um, an expression of the concern of Paul and Timothy towards the brethren who were in Colossae. But as he continues his letter, actually all the way up to verse 8, Paul begins his letter with beautiful descriptions of who the believers were in Colossae. These were either things that he had heard from Epaphras concerning who they were. At the same time, these were also assumptions. In other words, these were things that Paul assumed every believer had and understood. Because as we go through these descriptions, now today actually we will just focus on verse 2. As we go through these descriptions of who true believers are, they will also serve as important reminders for us. Eh. Kung anong dapat balaan natin pati sa aton nga relasyon kay Kristo. Okay? The world, one of the strongest deceptions, brethren, in the world is religion. Okay? We, we focus so much on the religion, we don't have a proper understanding concerning God and concerning who we are as believers. Ang aton nga identity is based on what religion we are in, rather than on who Christ is, and because of that, who we are, because of our faith in Him. Okay? So what does verse 2 tell us? Paul is addressing the believers. And he, in, the, in the NIV, he says, to the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace and peace to you from God our Father. Okay? To the holy and faithful brothers. Okay? So two things ang makita natin dili. First, ang word na holy sa NIV talks about our position. Okay? It talks about who we are in the eyes of God. Secondly, the word faithful describes our life. Okay? So they were the holy and faithful believers. But I'd like to focus on another English word that is used for the word holy. So if, you, if we look at the ESV, for example, Zion, the ESV um, translates it to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ. I remember as I was studying this, no, na, 
the first time, kasi sang, when, when I was born again and I, and I was growing as, as a new believer, my first Bible was an NASB Bible. Not, wala pang NIV during that time. And ang, ang pagbasa ko sa sining a word na saint, no? nagtingala ko eh. Why? Because growing up as, as a Roman Catholic, we all, those of us who, who were Roman Catholics before, kabalaw naman kita kung sino ang mga saints. Di ba? Number one, ang mga saints patay. Okay? Number two, they lived exemplary lives. No? Generally speaking, no? as if wala sila sala. No? Third, they had to be canonized okay, by, by Rome. And then fourthly, they would help us in our prayers. No? And so every time we would use the word saint, no? hindi natin ginausar sa mga buhi na believers. Ginausar natin sa mga patay na. Saint Paul, di ba? Saint Peter, um, Saint Augustine, no? etc. And that was my understanding. When, so when I first read the word saint, I wondered why Paul was calling them that. Number one, they were alive. No? And number two, if they were like me, they were not perfect. No? So, why will we call them saints? Okay. And even today, you are probably wondering, why is that the English word for the Greek word hagios? Okay. The Greek word which literally means holy. The word saint, it talks about someone who is set apart. That's the same meaning as the word holy. A saint is someone who has been set apart for Christ. Okay? But, as I mentioned a while ago, holy, kag saint, ano siya? It's not talking about life. Because there is none of us here who are perfect diba? For, to consider ourselves holy. Diba lang? But the word holy here talks about our position which is very important for us to understand. Okay, there are so many Christians, even true believers, because, you know, we always think that, ay, hindi naman ako perfect, so sometimes we make it an excuse to continue on in our sinfulness. But to help us understand the life we are to live, we need to understand who we are in Christ. The moment we believe in Christ, we are set apart. That's what the word saint means. No? If, if you're trying to imagine it, it's the way that God looks at you because you have believed in Christ. Okay? The moment you have believed in Christ, you have been born again, you have been forgiven, you have been adopted as His child, the Lord looks at you as holy. He looks at you as a saint. Okay? Amen? Okay. That's why, you know, there are many of us, we laugh every time I say na, oh, so good subong, let's start calling us, calling ourselves saints. Okay? So, si San Samuel, kumusta ka da? Okay? Oo na, no? Siyempre, gina-resist na to, di ba? Kasi sino naman ako? That's not a title. The word saint is not a title. It's not even a description. It's a position. It is who you are. The Greek word holy simply means that you are sacred. You are set apart only for God. Amo nang meaning sina. Okay? How many of you, for example, in your homes... You have either glasses or mugs no, for coffee na para sa ibo lang. Pag may nagusar na iban, oh, nga ginusar mong ako nga mag. No? Kasi para sa aton, ano na eh, holy siya. It is set apart for me. So, do not use it. Okay? Right? Nakuha nyo? Ang iban sa inyo, may reserve seats na diri sa, sa sanctuary. Di ba? Pag may nagpungko nga iban eh, sa mind mo, nagkapangaki ka. Nga, nagkapang ko siya. Ta. Ako dapat ako pong uda. No? Kaya ginakonsider mo, sacred ang ina nga chair. Okay? Tanawa ang isa ka chair, walang nagkapungko. Okay? Basi may anghel da. Okay, pero anyway, 
na? in our minds, right? You, you get what I'm trying to tell you? Now understand this. If you are a true believer, a disciple of Christ, when God looks at you, He says, I have set you apart for me. Okay? Now, how many of us wake up every morning with that understanding? Okay? Lord, I am set apart for you. Not for any other person. Not for any company or government. Diba? I am set apart for you. Now, even as early as now, you already begin to relate it as to how you will live. See? Not because there are sets of rules and regulations that you have to follow as Christians, but Lord, ang ako nga kabuhi, gin set apart mo, Lord, para sa imo. You see? That's what the word holy means, and that's what the word saint means. A believer in Christ is someone whom God has set apart for His glory. What an important reminder that is concerning our understanding of who we are. Because if we truly understand that, it affects every action, every thought, every motive in your heart, brethren. We are saints. We are those who have been set apart. Do you know that God proclaimed this for His people? Israel? Okay. Turn with me to Leviticus. Let's go all the way back to when God formed His people. Israel brought them to the promised land. He gave them laws okay, and things to follow. Sometimes we wonder why. Why were there so many laws why were there so many um, things for them to follow with regards to diet and with regards to sacrifice no? and, and even with regards to life? Why did God give them the law? Look what Leviticus 20, verse 22 to 24 says. Okay. Keep all my decrees and laws and follow them. So that the land where I am bringing you to live may not vomit you out. Grab it, no? Ang mga words na ginaw sa ni Lord. In other words, you also give. Okay? You must not live according to the customs of the nations I'm going to drive out before you. Because they did all these things, I abhorred them. Okay? So it gives you a hint already. No, jutay lang na footnote. Of why the Lord was getting rid of all these people. Because many people wonder, grabe si Lord, no? Para lang sa iya katao, patsyon niya ang mga ibang na nation. No. Every time there is death, you need to understand there is judgment. Okay? God was not just killing people. He was judging them for their sins. Both for Israel and all other nations. Okay? It looks like war. But for God, it was, that was not the motive. So, amon ang ambal niya, oh. Um, because they did all these things, I abhorred them. But verse 24, But I said to you, you will possess their land. I will give it to you as an inheritance, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, what does he say? Who has set you apart from the nations. That was Israel. See? That was the reason for the laws. The laws did not set them apart. Because they were set apart, God gave the laws. There's a difference. Okay? The Israelites were not trying to be set apart by obeying the laws. No. Because they were set apart, they obeyed the law. Supposed to be. It was an expression of their understanding of their being holy to the Lord. But we all know, sadly, that this did not happen to Israel. Okay? But did this change how God looked at them? No. Brethren, look at verse 26. You are to be holy to me because I, the Lord, am holy and I have set you apart from the nations. To what? 
to be my own. Katahom na? Grabe na? Isaiah 43, verse 1. Through Isaiah, the Lord said, you know, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Okay? You see, our, uh, uh, before I go to Asta, this was also something that Jesus Christ proclaimed. In John 16, verse 15, we went through this, of course, so many Sundays ago. Jesus said, all that belongs to the Father, the Lord, is mine. Okay? All those whom the Father has given me, they're mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make known to you. You are mine. Jesus, the Christ, is repeating the same words of the Father towards Israel, but this time towards His disciples. Diba? I am the good shepherd. I call you by name. Diba? That's what He said. Very similar to Isaiah 43. I call my sheep by name. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that I am special. Okay? No. What it means is we are His. We belong to Him. Okay? Now, with that understanding, okay, I, don't, I, I pray the Holy Spirit may be showing us already, how then should I live? How then should I face, love, uh, face life? God's so good siya sa position, understanding who we are. Okay? In this world where we are so influenced by you know, philosophies and teachings and people who try to bring these philosophies upon us, the first thing we need to say is, who am I? If I am someone set apart for God, I belong to Him, Tisino dapat ang ginapamatian ko? Who should I be listening to? Who should I be following? Who should be influencing my life? In Romans 1 verse 6, Paul also wrote and said, And you also are among those who are called to what? To belong to Jesus Christ. Okay? So it's the Lord saying, You belong to me. That's why you are a saint. That's why you are holy. God will look at the world and all those who are His, we are all set apart in His eyes. Okay? We are all those people set apart for Him. Brethren, this is who we are. First for Israel, then the church. We are a people set apart for God. We belong to Him. We belong to Him for His glory and no one else. And as I mentioned a while ago, I, I pray that, you see, this is something very important for us to understand because we, we go through Christianity, we go through this uh, relationship that we have with God. Yung nga, una una, sa religion eh, di ba? Because this is my religion, so dapat gali, nag-follow ko dali, this is how I should live, this is how I should walk. And that's why there are many so-called Christians, nag-compromise sila, kay hindi nila nangyitsindihan eh. Ang abid nila religion lang eh. So kung so, so, religion lang ni, eh, pwede naman magbago eh. Kasi hindi naman siya importante. Or you can be following this as, you know, the, the, the ways of God as rules and regulations. But eventually, ang rules and regulations, they do not work. Diba? We always do not follow rules and regulations. Right? It's in our nature. Grabe, no? So even with God. But how are we to understand who we are? I have been set apart in my belief in Christ as my Savior and Lord, God has set me apart for Him. Look what Paul writes in Romans 14, verse 7 to 8. Paul's, Paul wrote and said, For none of us, verse 7, no? none of us lives to himself alone. And none of us dies to himself alone. Verse 8, If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, what? We belong 
to the Lord. Wow! Di ba? What the, for some of us, it's a reminder. For, for the others, oh, oh, gali, no? Because the reason why we have a wrong concept of God, because it, we, we think that God belongs to us. Oh, di ba? Lord, nagpati ko sa imo. That's why, dapat i-bless mo ko, Lord. Dapat, I, I, ang ako nga prayers, Lord, you will answer them, etc. No, no, it's the opposite. We belong to Him. We are here for His glory. We are here according to, uh, our understanding of life is according to His sovereignty. You see? That's why, so whether I live or whether I die, it's all to the Lord. Wow, grabe na. It really makes us Think, brethren. Okay? We are saints. We are not saints because of our life. Kasi imperfect kita eh. We are saints because of who we are in Christ. Okay? That is why we are set apart. And that's who we are, brethren. You know, in, in um, the time of Paul, churches were you notice by city, diba? the church in Ephesus, the church in Colossae, etc. During that time, pwede pa. Subong, sa Bacolod City, damo tal local churches. Okay? But each and every one of us need to look at ourselves that way. Diba? I am a saint in Bacolod City. Okay? Okay ba? Amen? Okay? Hindi nyo pa gusto? Okay? Saint is not a title. It's a position, okay? So we are saints set apart for God and His glory here in Bacolod City. Okay? Amen? Oh, may mga taga-Mursia man. Sino pang out of town pa diri? Basta, biskan din ka mo. Negros na lang, para isa na lang. Okay? In Negros Occidental, we are set apart for God. Okay. That's what Paul was telling them. The saints, diba? they, we are not set apart for Bacolod. We are not set apart for the government. We are not set, listen to this, you are not even set apart for your husband or for your wife. Okay? You are set apart for God. And that's who I am, Lord. So as we continue this day, for example, remember that. I'm set apart for God, right? And, the, and this now begins to influence the very understanding of life and it begins to set the philosophies that you have. Why? Because, Lord, I am yours. Because, so because I belong to you, how should I then live? What an important foundation. So, ang tanaw natin sa Word of God sa Bible, hindi sa rules and regulations lang sa akong na religion. This is how God wants me to live. So if I have been set apart for you, Lord, I will look at your word and your teachings as that which should describe my life. Diba? We are separ- set apart for no one else or nothing else but Christ. Okay? And how important is this Understanding And as our understanding of being set apart leads us to understand how we should be living. Okay? That is the second description that Paul writes. Okay? Look at his head. Verse 2. Balik ta sa verse 2. Sa NIV, to the holy and what? Faithful brothers in Christ. Okay? But this is, you know, this is not, ano, huh? um, this is not just, you know, sometimes I, I, I have to write a letter and sometimes you begin the letter by saying, Dearly beloved, diba? or uh, the wedding, no? you know, my beloved brothers and sisters. Diba? Now, sometimes, the, the, the formalities lang, diba? this was not formalities. You need to understand, these are the words of Christ, inspired. Diba? Paul is calling the Colossians faithful Saints. Not only were they saints in position, now he talks about life. You are saints who are faithful. Hindi lang nagapabati si Paul, lang, uy, faithful. No, no, this, again, I, I mentioned a while ago, it's either he heard this from Epaphras, 
No? Epaphras telling him, you know, these, these brothers and sisters, Paul in Colossae, they are faithful to the Lord. Maybe. No? But this could also be a presumption. In other words, Paul was presuming that if you're a saint, you're faithful. Right? A Christian is a faithful saint. It becomes a description of the very position that we have. It is a tandem. It is a duo. Okay? It is a team. You cannot separate the two. If you're a saint, you are faithful. Why? Because you know who you are. Brethren, okay? being a saint, someone set apart for Christ, brings the assumption that you are faithful. Okay? One deception that either Satan or the world has brought upon us. You know what deception that is? We have a choice to be faithful or not. What? Because there are so many Christians, assuming they have this understanding that I'm set, set apart for God, that they're believers. Do, do kita pang nagapili, mga faithful ko, hindi. Okay? okay lang ba na lukewarm ang ako ng life? Diba? Okay lang na, na diri lang ko sa background, na, na ma, masin ko kung kaisa, kag worldly, kag fleshly ang akon nga life, kay amuni ko, this is who I am, and so, you know, uh, people, people will understand. We, we, we have this weird concept of Christianity where we can choose to be faithful or not. Iba? Amo na yung ginambal ko ever since the Gospel of John. Eh. Okay? Ang importante, nagapati ko kay Jesus, pag napatay ko, mapalangit ko. Pero while I'm living, there is no sense of faithfulness. But that is not biblical, brethren. It is not the concept that God had for His people. Okay? True believers in Christ do not have the option to remain faithful or not. Especially if you understand your position in Christ. If I'm set apart for you, Lord, and I'm set apart for your glory, I'm set apart to, be ex to, to exalt you, Everything that I do, everything that I think is meant to be for you. Everything that we do. It's a deception that men have allowed to creep into the church. That's why there are so many Christians today who are not faithful. Why? Sige lang. Anyway, parehas kami sa thief on the cross. Diba? Pero mo, kawatan na, di ba? Nagpalangit pa. Di parehas na kami. Hindi. Ang thief on the cross was saved by grace. Eh, he did not have the opportunity to live for Christ, but he was saved. Kita, we're not in the cross. We have a life to live. What kind of life are we supposed to live? Christians are called to be faithful saints. The believers in Colossae were faithful saints. Brethren, the word faithful means trustworthy, true. See, that's who you are. God looks at his saints and he says, I can trust this saint to give me glory in this life. It's just like God looking at Job and saying, telling Satan, Sige lang, Satan, tagaan mo siya trials. Why? Because I know him. Lord. It's the same thing with every saint. Now, if the believers in Colossae were faithful saints, and yet Epaphras prayed that they would be mature and fully assured. And Paul himself prayed, we'll see that next Sunday. Paul himself, no, two Sundays from now, Paul, Paul himself prayed that they would be filled with the knowledge of God's will. And Paul also had the burden to warn them of deceptions. If they were already faithful saints, why was he still writing this letter? Okay? Why was he still warning them? Why? Because, brethren, even if we are faithful saints, 
we should not let our guards down. Okay? We should not. Even if we know our standing in Christ, and many of us will claim that, yes, Lord, I have been faithful to you and to your teachings, we should never think that we will not be victims of deception. Okay? Because there are hindrances and attacks to our faithfulness. Okay? There will always be a temptation. There will always be a trial. There will always be a person. There will always be a teaching that will be or put us in danger of leaving our position and our faithful life, brethren. Always. Si Paul nagabal sa mga Corinthians, if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. Hambal ni Paul sa Corinth. Okay? Importante sa Kristiyano na faithful kita. But it's also important for us to understand there are things around us that will destroy that faithfulness. It could be a world, a person in the world. Basi sa inyo nga opisina. You have what is called, it is an old term that I used to use before, an anointed tribulator. Okay? There's a person of the world whom God has anointed to tribulate you. Ay, hindi ko sure kung may word na tribulate. Di ba? In other words, gugulahin niya ang buhay mo. Okay? Kung paano siya magambal, ang iya nga character, batasan niya na daw kakwan. And, you know, you're tempted to, you know you're not supposed to answer back in it. Hmm, di ba? And God says, anak, faithful ka lang, sin o ka, faithful saint, yes, Lord. O, di ba? You can be, it will be a circumstance. What kind of circumstance? You can be financially struggling. Okay? And you're being tempted maybe to steal or, or tempted to, 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 to deceive people just to get more. But God needs to remind you, anak, you are mine. Be faithful. Diba? So many things. There can be someone in the church or in your house in certain moments. They will attack your faithfulness. Di ba? Amen? Pagambal ko sa church, eh, nag-hipos ang tanan. Eh. Huh? Ang iba, nag-ambal, may kilala ko. Nag- nag-amok ka na, oh. Okay? Could be your husband. It could be your wife. Your neighbor. Di ba? Who will, who will get us away no? from, this, from this position and life that God calls us to. Lord, I'm your saint. I'm set apart for you. And Lord, you've called me to be faithful. Diba? You've called me to, to be trustworthy, to continue on, Lord. That's why here, here's when your prayer comes. The one, again, i-connect mo sa prayer ni Epaphras, sa prayer ni Pablo, para sa mga Colossians, and even the, le- the, the Paul telling them to devote yourselves to prayer. Diba? So many of the words in this letter will always link to our being faithful. Grabe, no? Because God chooses His faithful saints, but He also warns them. Okay? Is this biblical? Is this something that we see? Last Sunday, if you remember, the very first deception was upon who? Was upon two people who were living alone with God in the Garden of Eden. Oh, di ba? They were there enjoying this beautiful garden with fellowshipping with God and all of a sudden, Satan uses a snake to lead them away from what? From God's Word. Di ba? Simple lang ang iyang deception is, is uh, attacks and hindrances to our faithfulness a common thread in the Word of God? Yes. Brethren. Diba? Yes. Even after seeing the mighty hand of 
God bring them out of Egypt through Moses? When Moses went up the mountain to get the commandments of God, sang absent siya, what did they do? They made a golden calf. Because they said, hala, basipatay na si Moses, paano ni man? So balik na naman sila. They've seen all these miracles. May mana from heaven and all of these things. And yet, how easily their faithfulness was, was destroyed, di ba? Golden calf later on sa Israel, duwa ka golden calf na ang himoon nila. Hindi lang isa. It's in their history, brethren. Okay? You know, later on, when God was about to have His people enter into the promised land, okay, this is what He taught them concerning their faithfulness. Now, turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 18. God continually pursued His people so that they would remain faithful to Him, brethren. Okay? Look what He tells them in Deuteronomy 18, verse 14 to 15. In verse 14, The nations you will dispossess listen to those who practice sorcery or divination. Okay? But as for you, the Lord your God has not permitted you to do so. Okay? The lo- verse 15, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. Okay? Look at verse 18. I will raise up for them a prophet like you. They're talking to Moses from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth and he will tell them everything I command him. And if anyone does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. Okay? What's the point here? The point here is this. Eh? God wanted his people to remain faithful. How were they to remain faithful? They were to listen to the words. No? And even with this, brethren, even after Moses, even after Joshua, even when Samuel was there, even when David came, and all the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, read the Bible. What happened to these people? Okay? Their faithfulness was always attacked and they would always fall away from God. Ano no meaning sang faithfulness? Gapadayon ka kay Lord. Diba? It was always there. Now what's interesting about verse 15, balik ta sa verse 15. Verse 15, it says, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet. Okay? Now, it's singular. Okay? God did not say, I'm going to raise up for you prophets. Hindi. God was talking about someone. Okay? He was talking about someone. It's interesting because Peter referred to this in his very first preaching in Acts chapter 3. Turn with me. Acts chapter 3, starting from verse 19. Peter preached and he said, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord and that he may send the Christ who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. He must remain in heaven until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. For Moses said, here, that's where he quotes it, okay? For Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must, what? Listen to everything that he tells you. Amo nang yabe gino, brethren sa faithfulness. The key to faithfulness is listening and applying. That's how we become faithful. Who was Peter talking about? The Christ. Okay. The Christ. You must listen to everything that he tells you. Okay? Are we? You see, it's, it's, 
you can easily ask, am I faithful? Okay? And we base it on our actions. Ari naman ko di every Sunday. No, but are, are we listening to Him? Are we listening to the Lord and His Word in every aspect of my life? Am I listening to Him? Okay? That's why, you know, you read ahead with Colossians, go to chapter 3. Paul now comes into detail about life. How are we supposed to live? Okay. How, are, how, are, how, does, how does our life, how is, or how does our life show that we are faithful to the Lord? The new covenant in Christ Jesus, brethren, ushers in a new way of listening to God. Do you know that? Do you know how, do you know how blessed we are compared to the people of the Old Testament. Okay? The people of the Old Testament, they needed prophets. They needed someone like Moses or Joshua or David to speak to them from God. Ano different subong? Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 8. We're talking about being faithful. Being faithful by listening and applying you know, what, what our God desires from us. Hebrews 8 verse 8. But God found fault with the people and said, The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant. And I turned away from them, declares the Lord. Look at verse 10. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Isn't this true today, brethren? I hope it's true today. Because if you still look at God's word and scripture as something external, na hindi siya diri sa aton nga hearts, kag minds, then we are not yet part of this new covenant in Jesus Christ. We're living as if we're part of the old covenant. That these are just laws that we're supposed to follow. Pero ang Lord, sa bag nga covenant in Jesus Christ, my laws will be in their minds and in their hearts. Okay? He said, I will be their God and they will be my people. What does that describe? Saints. Faithful saints. Listening to the words of God. Kung bak, kung nagbasa mo sang, sang gospels, di ba? Every time Jesus would speak a parable, what would they say? What would they say? He who has the tongue twister, say, di ba? He who has ears to hear, okay, kung kaysa puro age, di ba? He who has ears to hear, let you, okay? He who has kita talaman made ears, eh, di ba? But what ears were, was Jesus talking about? Not the ears of Kwan. Because you can hear words. But you don't hear God. Diba? He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. This is how our faithfulness comes in. No wonder, brethren, in Colossians 3, verse 16, turn with me. Look what Paul wrote to the believers in Colossae. Colossians 3, 16. Nagsulat si Paul, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish. You remember last Sunday? What does admonish mean? To very good. Wala nagsabat. Okay? Admonish means to warn. Okay? Warning. Okay? Who is warning in the verse? Pastor? Hindi. Admonishing one another. You notice that? Okay? Admonishing, teaching and admonishing one another with all wisdom. 
And as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Okay, balik ta sa first sentence. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. That's why Paul wrote it in Colossians. Eh? If you're going to be a people who are firm and fully assured in your knowledge of Christ, you need the Word of God dwelling in you richly. Eh? Richly. Pag nagabal ka rich, ano na, damo siya kwarta. Diba? Damo, pag open ng Passbook, hindi siya nahuya na magpalapit sa teller sa banko. Kay makita ang balance eh, di ba? Kaya kung 100 pesos lang eh, doon mahuya ka pa no? Gina-explain mo pang ang self mo, di ba? Ay, kaya 100 pesos lang kaya, eh, why man siya labot eh, pero nahuya ka lang eh, di ba? Pero pag rich ang imo nga deposit, hmm, oh, daya na yun, oh, di ba? Oo, oh, si Kwan, single ka pa, oh, di ba? Siyempre, ma-attract sila sa imo kasi rich ka. But what's the richness of believers? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. If God were to check your hearts right now, what riches would he find? Okay. If God were to check right now, what is it that dwells in your heart richly? Medical journals that are proving that the vaccine or the ivermectin is right. The words of politicians promising what's this for our nation. News. Chismis sang inyong neighbor or inyong mga pariente. What dwells in your mind richly? Pong? Kang? Diba? What dwells in your heart richly? So many of us, and not, I, not, not many of us, so many of us in the world na lang, hindi here. But I don't know. I have no idea, brethren. But you need to ask yourself, eh, is the word of God dwelling in... No wonder some of us were questioning our faithfulness. Why? Ay, 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 ko idea ko. Kung ano yung mood ko eh, di ba? Ang attitude natin, bahala na. Basta, I'll just live. Bahala na kung will the Lord o hindi. Hindi. <laughs> okay? The Word of God must dwell in us so richly that, again, it begins to form our philosophies. It begins to dictate our actions. Yes, believers have traditions, but our tradition comes from God and His Word, not from human traditions, not from religious traditions. Diba? Ang pinakasimple na pamangkot, ari o, nga ari ka mo di subong. Why are you even here today? Why are you not here? Sa mga nasa live feed. But why are you here today? Because it's a day of obligation? That you have to be here? And so, importante, makita lang ko sa ibang mga kristyano para mahambal sila na spiritual ko. Or am I doing something that I believe my God wants me to be doing? That's the only way you will be blessed by being here, brethren. Or even the live feed. I'm not telling you that you have to be here. But if you're listening in the live feed, and you're here today, and you're doing it because you know this is what God's will is, that's where you'll be blessed. Not because of any obligation. Not because of any religious tradition. That just pleases your human mind. See? Let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. Right? So that we may teach and admonish one another. See? You see, when the word of God dwells in you richly, that's where you... And that's where, that's where you're, you're able to to warn and teach and encourage other believers. Right? And it's, not, it's not even about memorizing verses. It's about understanding God's Word. It's about understanding these things. You know what, brethren? Interestingly, Paul ends his letter 
by citing brethren who are faithful. You know that? Turn with me to Colossians chapter 4. Starting from verse 7, you, 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 we can read this, as, of course, as the end of a letter. Na, naghahamba lang siya, ginaw. Kinukumusta ka ni Itay Kikus, kagamuni. No? Pero, um, look what he says. Again, no? if anyone knows how to really pronounce these words, di ba? Tay Chikus, Tay Kikus, Tay Kikus, wala ta kabulo, di ba? Anyway, Tay Kikus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother and what? Faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. So I'm sending him to you, verse 8, for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. Okay? Verse 9, he is coming with Onesimus, okay? a seller of barongs. Ay, hindi ka sa SM na. Okay? He is coming with Onesimus. What is he called? Our faithful and dear brother. Okay? Now, you, you can't help but think eh. Why, why is Paul including these people in his letter? He begins by calling them faithful saints. And you cannot help but look at the rest of the body of his letter talking about faithfulness. If you continue in your faith, tambal niya sa Colossians 1, do not be deceived. Di ba faithfulness na? Right? And then he talks about those faithful uh, with him who were Jews. Verse 11, also Jesus who is called Justus, these are the only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are from the circumcision. Because that becomes an issue that he deals with. And he says, may upod ko na halid sa circumcision na subong faithful kay Kristo, hindi na sa circumcision. Okay? He, he seems to remind them. And then in verse 17, look how he, he ends by talking to uh, Archippus or Archippus and he says verse 17 Archippus see to it that you complete the work that you have received from the Lord it's another way of saying Archippus be faithful diba? be faithful to what the Lord has asked you to do yeah, ben, huh? faithful Saints. Okay? Faithful saints. But one more, one more brother I want to show us here. Sa Colossians. Why is faithfulness such an important aspect of our life? Look at verse 14. Colossians 4. Colossians 4 verse 14. Paul wrote, Our dear friend Luke, no? the doctor, sino na? Ang writer sang Gospel of Luke. Diba? He's also in the book of Acts. He was always with Paul. He, uh, our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas sends greeting, okay? Take note of that word, Demas. Why? Because you see him again in Philemon, or Philemon, as, as you know, uh, American pastors will pronounce it. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Philemon, Philemon, Philemon. Look at verse 23 of uh, Philemon, or Philemon, whatever, no? Ang balni, Kwan, verse 23. Epaphras, sounds familiar? Ay, wala pa si Kwan, okay? Philemon 23. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. And verse 24. And so do Mark, familiar names, di ba? Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. Ay, kung talawon mo, puro ngalan, di ba? So kung masi may pregnant din eh, makapili ka ng alan, di ba? Si Epaphras, Art Aristarchus, oh, di ba? Kanami. Pero aral na naman si Dimas. Fellow worker niya ko, no? Wala sa projector. So dapat sa Bible ka mo nagatulog, di ba? Si Dimas, fellow worker. Right? Si Dimas now, in 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 9, 9 and 10. Paul wrote to Timothy. This is his last letter before he was martyred. Okay? He says, Do your best to come to me quickly. Verse 10. For who? Demas. Okay? Because he loved this world has deserted me. Okay? <laughs> Faithfulness. Faithfulness. He loved 
this world. Now, we don't know the details. Pero naglain ang sulat ni Pablo, eh, di ba? Una, fellow worker, Dimas sends you greetings. Subong, lapit na siya mapatay. It's as if his heart is broke. I don't know, ah. But the way I read it, his heart is broken. Eh, Dimas, who loved this world, has deserted me. Okay? Grabe, no? That's what I said. Our being a saint and our being faithful is attacked every day. We're surrounded, brethren, either by people, circumstances, or teachings that will bombard us. Okay? Simple lang, no? Pagsugod sang letter to the, faith, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ. Okay? I pray that the Holy Spirit will remind us of this always. Who are we? We're set apart for Him. What? How should we live faithful, trustworthy to the Lord? Okay? Let's pray. Father, we can only bow down in Lord, sometimes in shame. Na huyak kami ginoo, okay? Kabulo kami, Lord, that in ourselves, we, we cannot be faithful. If we trust in ourselves and in our own strength, we cannot be faithful. But Lord, we thank you that you have set us apart. Hindi kami gino. Ikaw ang nag sa amon, Lord, sa kalibutan. You have set us apart from this world. We are yours, Lord. We belong to you. And may this position in Christ fuel our faithfulness, Lord. Not self-effort, not self-dependence on our own strength, but Lord, dependence upon who you are and what you have done to make me who I am today, to make us who we are today, Lord. Lord, I pray that these descriptions may be etched in our hearts. We are saints. We are holy unto the Lord. And we are called to be faithful, Lord. May this be descriptions that not only we ourselves may see, but others also may know in our lives. And may they know, Lord, that when they see us holy and faithful, it's not because of us. It's not because of what we have done. It is all because of you. And may our holiness and faithfulness, Lord, be the standards, the foundations of our philosophies, our wisdom, our understanding, especially in our knowledge of who you are, Lord. May we have this in our hearts always. Salamat, Gitgino. Be with us as we end our service, as we enjoy the day, Lord. May we just, may our eyes be open to see your goodness and your greatness, Father, in our lives. Thank you. We give you all the glory that you alone deserve, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a blessing. Let's just clap.